In this video, our focus is on translating sentences using nested quantifiers. So now I'm going to translate the statement, the sum of two positive integers is always positive, into a logical expression. And for some of you, this might just be very easy for you to do, but if you're struggling with how do I even get started, it might be a good idea to rewrite that sentence. And instead of using, say, positive integers, say X and Y. Instead of saying um, always positive, we might say greater than zero. So we're basically rewriting the sentence to be just a bit more mathy so that it's easier for us to translate into a logical expression. So I can say for all positive integers, X and Y, X plus Y is greater than zero. So this statement says that my the sum of my values is positive, always positive. And over here, I'm basically telling you what X and Y could possibly be. So there's a couple of different ways that we might be able to translate this correctly and effectively. I might say for all X that belongs to the integers, for all y that belongs to the integers, if x is greater than 0 and y is greater than 0, then x plus y is greater than 0, and all of that. This is one correct way. Um, another correct way that I could do this is I could say for all X's that belong to the positive integers, for all Y's that belong to the positive integers, then I can just go straight to X plus Y is greater than zero. Either of these are perfectly correct and I'm sure that there's other ways that you could come up with that would make this correct as well. So for this question, you can see that it is a little bit different because we are looking at predicates that are already given to us. So E, X, Y denotes that X sent Y an email and T, X, Y sent, uh, denotes X sent Y a text. Now we're going to use those to translate the following. So every student in the class, so every student, hopefully your math brain says for all students X, and in the class is just the domain, so we're okay with for all x. Um, in the class, sent an email to Joe. And so email was e, x, y, and we have to determine how we're going to write that in our sentence. So if we are okay with Joe having sent an email to himself, we can say for all x, e, X Joe just like that because X is the student and everyone is sending their emails to Joe now the first one that I've written includes that Joe sent an email to himself if you want to specify that Joe did not send an email to himself you can snazzy it up just a little bit and say for all X if X does not equal Joe then E X Joe. So essentially saying if the student isn't Joe, then that student did send an email to Joe. So two different ways to write that depending on how specific you would like to be. Looking at our second example, and again, you can always press pause and try these questions on your own first. But this one says there is a student. So again, right when you see there is a student, hopefully your math brain says there exists some student X. In class, again, in class just tells us that that's in the domain, who has not, so not received a text. So remember that's gonna be the TXY, and we'll have to figure out what to do with those letters, um, if that's the correct order, etc not received a text or an email. So again, we're saying 
not an email um, from any other student in the class. So this one, now that we've sort of gone through it together, is pretty straightforward. We're saying there exists some X. Now keep in mind, X is the student that is not receiving the email. So there exists some X that for every other student in the class, so from any other student, which is saying for all of the students in the class, so there exists some student such that for all the other students in the class, assuming again that our poor student is not the student that we're choosing to look at, then not E Y X and not T Y X. Now, does it matter if I choose Y X or X Y? Absolutely it does. And that is because up here at the top, we had said X sent Y an email. And down here I'm saying not Y sent X an email. So Y did not send X an email and Y did not send X a text. So this would be, oops, the proper format for that question. Okay, let's switch this up a little bit and do things backwards. So now we are given the predicates and we are, instead of translating from English to predicate logic, we are going backwards. So let's take a look. We know S of X denotes X uses Snapchat and f of x, y denotes x and y are friends. So we're going to translate into English again with the domain of students in class. So let's just get started. Here we have for all x. So we can say for all students in class, oh, not in call, in class, and then I'm going to talk about student X. So what do I know about student X? Well, either S of X or all of this stuff. So for all students in class, X either S of X, which says X uses Snapchat. So X either uses Snapchat or, and now I have to look at this second part of the statement. The second part of the statement says there exists some Y um, such that S, Y, and F, X, Y. So X either uses Snapchat or there is a student Y such that either S, Y, I'm sorry, and, so we're saying there exists a student Y such that Y uses Snapchat and is friends with student X. So for all students in class, X either uses Snapchat or there is a student Y such that Y uses Snapchat and is friends with student X. So I might even be able to write this a little bit simpler that says all students in class either use Snapchat or are friends with a student who uses Snapchat. So either one is fine, but as you can see, that second sentence makes things just a little bit more concise. Just for fun, you can go ahead and try this one on your own before we go over the answer together. Um, so I suggest you press pause, try both parts of the question, then press play, or just follow along with me. So let's take a look. We have let S X Y denote student X has taken class Y for the domain of all students at BU and all classes at BU. 
So translate the following. So there exists an X such that SX comma MA315. So what does that mean in English? Well, there exists a student X who has taken MA315, which is of course discrete math mathematics at Bellevue University. Um, the second one, this one gets a little crazy. I'm throwing X, Y, and Z. And is that fair? Well, sure it is. So this one says there exists an X and there exists a Y such that for all Z, X does not equal Y and S of XZ if and only if S of YZ. Well, great, but what does that actually mean? So what I know is X is a student and Y is a student, and I know that because the first term always has to be a student. And my very first sentence says that I've got a student X and a student Y. So there exist two students. And before I write two students, I wanna focus in on this one right here. What does X does not equal Y mean? That means these are not the same person. So there exist two distinct students. So I've gotten through there exists. I've gotten through, hey, they're not the same person. And now what does all of this business mean? Well, we can assume that Z is some class, right? So any class at BU. And we're saying that student X is registered for class Z or has taken class Z. And student Y has taken class C, Z. And this one's if and only if. So I could write it out in a longer sentence and then shorten it down, but I'm just gonna go straight for the gold. So there exist two distinct students at BU who have taken the exact same classes. Because essentially what I'm saying here is X will only take it, or X has only taken it if Y has taken it, and Y has only taken it if X has taken it, which means they have to have only taken the exact same class. Okay, now we're translating a statement from English into predicate logic using quantifiers, and we are not given what those predicates are. So this is a little bit harder. Um, and so essentially what we need to make sure that we do here is we have to tell everybody what our predicates will be. So let PXY denote what? So there's a man that has taken a flight on every airline in the world. So I'm going to let PXY denote X has taken flight Y. Now, why did I do that? Because I knew I was basically dealing with three things. So taken a flight and that flight is on every airline. So that's the three things. So PXY says X has taken flight Y. So X is the person. And then we're gonna let Q of XY, or nope, let's go YZ just to not make anybody get a headache. YZ denote that flight Y is a flight on airline Z. So whatever letter I use for a flight, I'm just gonna make sure I use that letter again as a flight. So now back to my sentence. I now have um, all of the tools that I need to be able to write this sentence. I'm going to say, there exists a man. There is a man, there exists a man. What do I know about this man? That he has taken a flight on every airline in the world. So for all airlines, A, there exists a flight such that 
And then PXY, remember this is the man has taken the flight and Q denotes that flight is on airline Z. So that flight is on the airline. Now, if you get confused with switching up letters, I could certainly have used up here instead of Y, I could have used flight and I could have used flight. And here I could have used airline, but there is nothing wrong with using X and Y just to be general up here and then making it more specific when we get down here. So this is our statement. There exists a man such that for all airlines there exists a flight such that the man has taken the flight and that flight is on that airline. So now that we have this massive crazy sentence or statement, I want to negate it. So I want to know how would I negate this with all of these nested quantifiers which we practiced in the last video. And then what does that new statement mean? So remember with negation, we've got this negation here. And my job is to make sure that it's not in front of any of my quantifiers and basically that I've simplified it as much as I possibly can. So I'm going to start by replacing this with for all M and then not everything else. So not for all A, there exists an F, etc., etc., etc. All of this remains the same. Doing lots of copying and pasting. And now I still have for all M, so for all men. And now I'm negating for all airlines. So how do I negate for all airlines? There exists some airline such as the rest of this is not true. So again, all of the rest of this just gets recopied, recopied, recopied. I just want to keep moving it in as far as I can get it. What's next? Well, now I can negate there does not exist a flight. And what is the negation of there does not exist a flight? Well, this stays the same, this stays the same. And I'm saying for all flights, not everything else. Now, the last time we practiced a negation together, we stopped right here because all of the stuff on the inside, we just put a knot in front of it and we were done. But now, hopefully, we see that we've got a little um, rule here, De Morgan that says, hey, you know what? I can actually distribute that knot to the inside. So I can say for all M, there exists an A such that for all F, and then I can say not P M F. And then of course, I'm going to switch this to or because that is what De Morgan's law says. And then I'm going to say not, I've got too many colors going on, Q, F, A. So that is as far as I can go. So this is the negation of the statement. And what on earth does that mean? That means for all men, there exists or there is an airline such that for all flights, the man has not taken the flight or that flight is not on that airline. If you found this video helpful, go ahead, like, and share it. And now we're going to move on to talking about logic, rules of inference, proofs, etc. So stay tuned.